Good morning, young persons. Welcome back to the high school wood shop. You know, we're making a series of videos on the uh, machines and the uh, materials and techniques that we use in the wood shop. And uh, today, in this segment, we're going to talk about the drill press. Um, this is a Delta 18 inch model. Um, it's a pretty good machine, it has a lot of features, works fine, lasts a long time. It won't rust, bust, or collect dust. It's called 18 inch machine because it has a 9 inch throat. And throat refers to the distance between the, uh, the cutting piece, the drill bit here, and here. So you can fit a piece of material in here uh, 9 inches from here to the center point of the bit. So they double that and they call it an 18 inch machine. It is a uh, variable speed. It has a, a laser uh, center marker so that you can drill a hole precisely, supposedly. Um, it has a work light so that you can uh, get a little bit of extra light on where you're working. This machine is a uh, variable speed, and that's important when uh, you want to use a different speed depending on what kind of material that you're trying to put a hole in. So uh, something, a ferrous metal, uh, like um, iron or steel, you're gonna wanna go very slow. And um, the softer the material gets, uh, aluminum, you go a little bit faster. Uh, plastic, you go very slow so it doesn't crack. Uh, when you get up to wood, then you may be 1500, 2000 RPM. You change the speeds on this machine uh, with a belt system that's underneath this cover. So the machine is unplugged, so I'm going to open the lid. Uh, this lid will never be open if it's not unplugged. If I see you open this lid and the machine is plugged in, I'll probably yell at you. It's very dangerous. You get your finger in here when this machine is on, it's going to take your finger right off as quick as the bandsaw. Don't do it. But um, by adjusting these belts, this belt here can move up and down, and this belt back here can move up and down, and that will change the speed. Uh, I think it goes as slow as uh, 150 RPM when you're uh, drilling into, you know, steel, hardened steel, and it goes up to uh, 3,000 RPM when you're drilling for something that's uh, probably a little bit thinner, uh, plywood or something. There is a, a chart up in here that will tell you the right speed to use for which material. How cool is that? This was a manual speed adjustment. Over here, there is a uh, light. On the back of the machine here, we have the motor. On the front of the machine is the power switch. You pull out on the bottom of it to turn it on, and you push it back to turn it off. This part here, which is called the uh, chuck, or th which is attached to the spindle, which is this metal shaft right above it. But this uh, chuck is where the drill bit is mounted, and it's mounted with a chuck key, which goes in a slot here on the side of the machine. The chuck key goes into here and you turn it to open and close the jaws to install the drill bit. Drill bit. Once again, this is the chuck, this is the chuck key. This of course here is the table where you're going to set your material to be drilling a hole in it. Uh, we have a support column back here that holds this, uh, the top of this drill press you know, up in the air. And um, so on the support column, we have a track. And on this track is used for lowering and raising the table. There's a lock, a collar lock on the back side here. And we use this handle to move the table up and down, depending on what it is that we're trying to do with this machine. So this is the table elevation handle. And this is the uh, column support base down here at the bottom. Also, there are two knobs here on the front that will allow the um, table to tilt forward, called the table tilt adjustment knobs. These are called the feed handle, and by turning this handle, that's what causes the drill bit to move up and down. Finally, on this side of the machine, we have a spindle lock stop. And with this abhor is so that we can set the depth of the uh, cut and uh, be consistent. So you say you want to go that far, I'm going to slide this all the way down to the bottom, and then Every time I pull the lever, it's going to stop at that depth. It's not super precise. Going to work in the wood shop? Step one, prepare yourself. If you're tired, sick, under the influence, even taking an over-the-counter drug like NyQuil. 
I'm not going to use the machine today. Today you probably just spend the day seated at the bench. One of the rules that we have working in the wood shop is that if you have long hair or perhaps hoodie strings or a necklace that dangle below your chin when you lean forward, that they must be tied back. That rule is mostly for this machine, since I don't have a lathe in here. This machine right here, if your hair or you have a necklace or something gets wrapped around this uh, spindle or chuck when it's turning, and it's going to ruin your day. It's going to happen before you have a chance to know it. You're going to bounce your head off the front of this machine, if not pull a chunk out of the side of your head. So, long hair, necklaces, strings on your hoodie must be tied back or restrained before you, this machine is even plugged in. Standard rule for a uh, drill press is that you want to ensure that the chuck key was not left in the chuck before you turn the machine on, before you even plug the machine in. Because if the chuck key is left in the chuck and you turn it on and this thing begins to spin, <coughs> It's going to sling this thing across the room and hurt somebody. Delta has a very clever feature on this particular machine in this shop where the chuck key has a spring-loaded pin that prevents that from happening. It's basically impossible to leave this chuck key in this machine because it just, the spring-loaded pin pushes it out. Ingenious, however, the rule is there. Just make sure that there is no chuck key or something else uh, on the machine before you plug it in and turn it on. Step number two, prepare the machine. Let's make sure that we have the table set at the correct height. Let's make sure that you have the correct bit installed that's going to accomplish what it is that you're trying to do. You're going to want to make sure that you have the stops over here set up correctly so that you're drilling to the depth that you uh, intend to do. As you prepare the machine, you may want to have some clamps nearby to help you hold the material down uh, so that the material doesn't catch and start spinning. Uh, we have uh, various items we can use to set up a fence. Uh, we could put a jig on here so that we can place material accurately and make the same hole at the same distance over and over. There's a lot of different things we can do depending on what you're trying to do. In this shop, we don't use the drill press very much but now you know. Step three is check the material. With this machine here, we need to have one side of the material that is flat, straight, and true that will sit on the table without rocking in order to use this machine. We are not going to be drilling holes in something like this round stock. We can drill a hole in this round stock, but there's going to be a special setup for it that you're going to have to come and talk to me about. We'll build a jig with some clamps or something so that we can do what we want to do but the basic rule is, if it does not have one side that's flat, straight, and true, so it sits on the table without rocking, you're not drilling a hole in it without my help. Of course, you're going to want to check your material, make sure it doesn't have any nails or screws or anything that's going to damage the drill bit. Okay, step four is use the machine correctly. So, I'm going to drill a hole. I already have my bit installed. I have already checked my material. Uh, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to turn the machine on by pulling out on the bottom of this, but I'm going to want to keep my hand, my fingers, away from the rotating uh, chuck and the drill bit for obvious reasons. I'm going to want to pull the feed handle at a consistent rate. I don't want to go, try to go too fast. I'm going to want to stop the drill press before I remove my work. It looks like this. I'll turn the machine on, holding the material firmly. Nice consistent rate. Bring the material back up. Let the, let the drill bit come to a complete stock before I remove my work. While you're drilling your hole, if you lose your grip and the material begins to spin, it's going to start to spin very quickly. And do not make the mistake of trying to reach up and grab it. Once that material starts to spin, the first thing you're going to do is shut the machine off. You reach out and try to grab that thing as it spins around, and all it's going to do is give you a bruise. So I'm going to try and demonstrate that here. As I'm drilling the hole, 
probably because someone will walk up behind and distract me, but you'll see it start to spin. Like that. You're, ma you're making a big mistake if you reach out and try and grab it. I'm going to do a set the machine up. Shut the machine off. Wait till it comes to a complete stop and remove the material and be thankful that you don't have a bruise on your hand. And let's think about what we did wrong and try again. I don't think I have that drill bit in there quite straight. Step five, of course, in our wood shop is that we're always going to want to be ready to deal with the unexpected. Now that thing taking off on you and start spinning, that's kind of unexpected. There's other things that can happen. A lot of times when you're doing something, your friends will come up and bug you. They'll tap you on the shoulder to try to get your attention. The person's really not your friend because they don't really care if you get hurt because they're goofing off. Don't be a distraction and don't fall for the distraction when someone else comes up to pester you. Finish what you're doing, bring it to a safe conclusion, and then turn and talk to the person. Step six in the wood shop. Please use common sense. If something doesn't feel right, it doesn't look right, it doesn't sound right. If you're not confident about what you're doing, if you're not confident about what's going to happen when you turn the machine on and start to use it, if you're not confident about what happens next, then stop. Don't do it. Wait. Step back. Watch someone else use the machine or call me over and I'll demonstrate the machine for you again. You can use the machine while I'm standing right next to you. We'll do whatever it takes so that we can do what needs to be done. I don't want you to use this machine or any other machine in this shop unless you know what you're doing and you're confident. You must have some questions.